It is now my distinct uh, honor and pleasure uh, for purposes of introducing uh, our keynote speaker to introduce the chair of this event, somebody who uh, others have already cited, uh, who's done tremendous things, not only uh, as chair and CEO of State Street, but also as chair of this dinner, Ron Logue. Please join me in welcoming Ron Logue. Good evening, everybody. Uh, it, it really is uh, a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Paul. And I, I, I have to thank the, uh, the committee who put this event together. Uh, you know, when, when, when you're asked to do something like this, uh, one of the first things that is usually said is, don't worry about it. The staff's going to take care of everything. You've got a great committee. You'll be OK. And I have to tell you, it was really true in this situation. The event committee that was put together for this event was truly fantastic. The, the hard work, the number of calls that they made, and the staff work truly made uh, the job that I had to do very, uh, very easy. And I just want to say thank you to all of you who made that job very easy. <laughs> but tonight, I am, I am very honored to introduce our guest speaker. Uh, as we celebrate the Greater Boston Chamber of Commerce 101st Annual Meeting and the organization's continued leadership role in the Boston community. I think it's fitting that we've chosen a speaker who has demonstrated what it is to be a leader throughout his career. Now, the word hero gets used an awful lot these days, but rarely do we get to meet someone who truly embodies what it is to be a hero. Someone who has demonstrated unbelievable courage, skill, and potential sacrifice in the face of mortal danger. Captain Chesley Sullenberger is such a person. Captain Sullenberger, or Sully, spent his younger years flying Air Force jets and serving our country, service and training that prepared him, even in the most dire circumstances, to react calmly and ensure the safety of his crew and his passengers. A graduate of the Air Force Academy, Sully rose to the rank of captain, became a flight leader, and trained a new generation of military pilots. After leaving the Air Force in 1980, he used his training to build a tremendously successful career in commercial aviation. During his three decades at US Airways, Sully logged more than 19,000 hours in the skies. He was involved in the Pilots Association, investigated accidents for the Air Force and the National Transportation Safety Board, and helped develop new courses for crew management. For three decades, he was well known throughout the company and the airline industry, but completely anonymous to the outside world. And then, on January 19, 2009, all that changed. You all know what happened. Sully had to use all his experience and training to make an emergency water landing on the Hudson River. He saved the lives of every single person on his plane and countless civilians on the ground. Notably, he was the last person to exit the plane, true to a captain's code. He actually walked twice the length of the cabin while the plane was taking on more and more water to make sure that no one was inside. Using his years of military and civilian training, decades of flying experience, and the wisdom and instinct developed over a long career, Sully safely accomplished what became his most important mission. And he didn't stop there. Sully continues to be an aviation safety expert and accident investigator, and is the founder and chief executive officer of Safety Reliability Methods, a consulting company dedicated to the management, safety, performance, and reliability consulting. He's using his experience and expertise to help influence the future, the actions, I think, of a great leader. So please join me in welcoming Captain Chesley Sullenberger.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. What a wonderful welcome. It's great to be in Boston. Thank you, Ron, for such a wonderful introduction. And congratulations to the honorees tonight. Let me also uh, um, add my welcome to a very special guest. You know, there is a passenger on Flight 1549 with us. I think you've been told that. Her name is Pam Siegel of Bank of America. But you know, the passengers on Flight 1549 have kept in touch with one another. I said early on that I felt like all the passengers and crew on Flight 1549 were now joined forever in our hearts and our minds because of the enormity of that day. And the passengers have a more esoteric way of identifying one another. You see, among the passengers, Pam is 12A. <laughs> so Pam, it's great to see you again. I suppose I should start tonight the way I always start, by saying that in spite of my best efforts for over a year now, there are still some people who insist on making this all about one person. And of course, that's not the case. Without the contributions of my crew, and I could not have had better colleagues that day or since, First Officer Jeffrey Skiles, Flight Attendants Donna Dent, Doreen Welsh, and Sheila Dale, the passengers themselves who behaved admirably that day. Of course, New York Waterway, all the first responders of New York, New Jersey, and our traffic controller from uh, New York uh, approach, Patrick Harden. We couldn't have had the same outcome. You know, uh, early on, an interviewer asked me and Jeff Skiles if in retrospect we would have done anything different on that important day. And my answer was that after having thought about it, I had finally realized that my crew and I really did our jobs exceptionally well, that we did the very best that we could with the unanticipated and extraordinarily difficult circumstance that we faced with an extremely high workload beyond extreme time compression, and that in a matter of seconds, we came up with a plan that we were able to implement in a few minutes that resulted in a, a safe emergency landing on the, on the frigid freezing Hudson River. My first officer, Jeffrey Skiles, on the other hand, when asked what he would have done differently, said instead, I would have done it in July. <laughs> <laughs> 